Good morning grade 4. Welcome back to grade 4 mathematics class. How are you all doing today? Today we'll learn how to find out the number of days in between the starting and ending of some events. So before learning to solve such questions, it's important to know how many days are there in each month. So we know a calendar year is divided into 12 months and some months have 30 days, some months have 31 days and February has only 28 days except in leap years. So it will be easy for you to find out the number of days in each month if you can memorize this small rhyme. It goes 30 days have September, April, June and November. All the rest have 31 except for February alone which has 28 days clear and 29 in a leap year. So it says that 30 days have September, April, June and November. So the four months September, April, June and November. These four months have only 30 days in an year. And the other months, which are the other months, January, February, March, May, July, August, October and December. These months have 31 days and in February it has only 28 days but once in every 4 years it will have one more day or 29 days. So it will be easier for you to solve these kind of questions if you know the number of days in each month of an year. So let's move on to the questions. How many days have elapsed between 12th January and 1st February? So how do we find out that? See. We are asked to find out how many days are there in between 12th January and 1st February. And how many days does January have? January has a total of 31 days. So from the 12th of January to the 31st of January, how many days are there? How do we find it out? Just subtract this 12 from this 31 and we get that as 19 days. Now. Between 12th January and 1st February. So only the first day of the month of February is considered here. So the number of days in February here is 1. So the total number of days between 12th January and 1st February is equal to this 19 plus 1. 19 days of January plus 1 day of February which is equal to 20 days. So there are 20 days between 12th January and 1st of February. February. So I hope this is clear to you. Now we'll see the next example. Neera's father left for Kolkata on 18th July and returned on 25th July. How many days did he stay there? So how would we find it out? So Neera's father left for Kolkata on the 18th of July and he returned on 25th of July. Now how do we find out how many days are there in between these two days? And here it is also mentioned that when you find out the number of days you have to exclude which means 18th of July and 25th of July are not included. You have to exclude these two days and then calculate the number of days which will be the number of days he stayed in Kolkata. Now how would you find it out? So if you are asked to exclude these two days then he must have stayed there from the 19th of July to the 24th of July. So he stayed in Kolkata from 19th of July to 24th of July. So he was there on the 19th, then 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd and 24th of July. These were the days in which he stayed in Kolkata. How many days are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. See? He stayed in Kolkata for 6 days. So you can also do this like, see, let's see the steps. Nina's father stayed in Kolkata from the 19th of July to the 24th of July. So the number of days he stayed is equal to 25 minus 19, the 25th of July minus 19 and that is 6 days. He stayed in Kolkata for 6 days. Hope this is clear to you. How many days are there between 5th June and 21st October. So which are the months between June and October? June, July, August, September and then comes October. 
So how many total days are there in June? June has got a total of 30 days. From the 5th of June to the 30th of June, how many days are there? It is equal to 30 minus 5 and that is 25 days. And how many days are there in the month of July? There are a total of 31 days in the month of July. And August, how many days are there for August? August has also got a total of 31 days. Then what about September? 30 days of September, April, June and November. So September also has only 30 days. And what about October? October has got a total of 31 days. But here we have to consider till the 21st of October only. So the first 21 days of October are to be considered here. So in this case 21 days are there for October. So now how do we find out the total number of days between the 5th of June and 21st of October. Just add all these number of days and you will get the final answer. So see the steps number of days left in June is equal to 30 minus 5. 30 is the total number of days in June and we are considering from the 5th of June only. So it is 30 minus 5 25 days. Number of days in July 31 days. Number of days in August 31 days. Number of days in September is equal to 30 days and number of days in October is equal to 21 days. So the total number of days is equal to this 25 plus 31 plus 31 plus 30 plus 21 and that is equal to 138 days. So between the 5th of June and the 21st of October there are a total of 138 days. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's learn about a leap year. See usually in an year we say there are 365 days. But in actual case, the earth will take a total of 365 and 1 by 4th of a day to go around the sun. So once in every 4 years, effectively we get 1 day extra. How? See, in 1 year it takes 365 and 1 4th of a day. So in 4 years it will take 1 by 4 into 4 times and that will give you an extra 1 day. See 1 by 4 into 4 is equal to 1 here. Can, after cancelling out the common factors, we get 1 day extra. 1 by 4th of a day in 4 years will give you 1 whole day. So that 1 extra day is added to the month of February once in every 4 years. And then February will have a total of 29 days. And you call such an year a leap year and you call the 29th of February as leap day. So a leap year will have a total of 366 days. Now how do we find out if a given year is a leap year or not? Just see if it is divisible by 4. If it is divisible by 4 then it will be a leap year. For example the year 2020, 2020 was a leap year. 1996. 1996 is also divisible by 4 and it is also a leap year and 1980 that is also divisible by 4 and it was a leap year. So if we have a given year just see if it is completely divisible by 4 and if it is it will be a leap year. Children I hope the concepts we learned today are clear to you. You have to go to the pages 158 and 159 you can read about these topics in these pages. Then you have to move on to the exercise 11.4 which is in page number 159. You have to complete the questions question number 1, 2, 4 that is 1, 2, 3 and 4 in your notebook. Then in the same page you can see a heading under the name try this. It is to circle the leap years. A few years are given there. You have to find out which all years are the leap years by checking their divisibility with 4. And once you have found out the leap years, just circle them. Then once you are done with these activities, just take a picture and send us to teams. So that's all for today children. We'll see you in the next class with a new topic. Till then, bye.